know. The buildings in Fontaine are so tall. Just look at how big they are. And there's the fountain that Aval mentioned earlier. It really is a magnificent sight. And look at that huge spinning sphere. Where does it get its power? <gasps> Wait a sec. Could it be one of those clockwork mecha we've heard so much about? Mmm. So this is what food from Fontaine is like. <sighs> it sure is different from what we have in Inazuma. How should I describe it? It seems like you have to go through a lot more uh, steps to make them. And the flavor has many layers too. Ah, uh, yes. When I first went to Inazuma, I actually thought the food there tasted a little too bland. It took some time for me to get used to it. Let's get back to the purpose of this trip for a moment, shall we? How have preparations for the film been coming along, Mr. Xavier? Well, I've already assembled most of the film crew. A lighting specialist, a prop manager, and a costume designer. I've also bought the copyrights from the novel's author. Oh, it's called The Two Musketeers, right? I read the script you sent me on the way here. The story is pretty good. Originally, I was planning to start filming as soon as Sir Kamisato and Lady Ayaka arrived in Fontaine, but, uh, I'm afraid I've run into a bit of a problem. Oh? What is it? It has to do with the film's investor, Mr. Morris. He suddenly informed me this morning that he's encountered some financial trouble and will be unable to release to me the amount of funding agreed upon. It's said that Fontaine's legal system is well developed. If he has violated the contract, then can't you simply take him to court over the matter? Ah, well, I'm still more concerned about filming. Even if I were to take him to court, I'm afraid it would take months before the case could even be heard. Then, is there a way we could raise funds ourselves to solve the problem? I've considered that option too, but unfortunately it's difficult to gather such a large amount of mora on such short notice. Besides, we have to consider the film festival's submission deadline. Hmm. Mr. Xavier, if Ayaka and I were willing to perform for free, would that resolve the problem you are currently facing? What? Uh, no, out of the question! To have you come all this way just to act for free? Oh, no, 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 that won't do. There's no need to worry, Mr. Xavier. My brother and I had actually intended to work for free after receiving your invitation. Inazuma has only recently reopened its borders, and needs to strengthen its relations and cultural ties with other nations. We didn't have many collaboration projects with Fontaine in the past, so we hoped this trip would serve as a good start for the future. Indeed. You could say that's the real reason why the Ashiro Commission agreed to come to Fontaine. I understand, but having you two act for free just doesn't seem right. Not at all. While we're officially here to conduct a cultural survey of sorts, we must express our sincerity if we want to establish formal cultural ties with your nation. This film will serve as proof of friendly cooperation and cultural exchange between Inazuma and Fontaine. It's my hope that the film can be finished and released as smoothly as possible. If you still don't feel comfortable with this arrangement, I would also be more than happy to be introduced to some other renowned individuals in Fontaine's literary and artistic circles. Uh, all right, I'll do as you say. Thank you, thank you so much. I'll make sure to cobble together enough mora now, even if it means selling my house, my camera, and every single family heirloom. Come on now, no need to go that far. I'll also help you out as a brand sponsor. Me too. Even though I didn't bring much more to spend on this trip, it's still better than nothing. <laughs> You are too kind, all of you. I... I really don't know how to... <laughs> uh, Alright, enough about that. Now that we have Xavier's savings, my support, and two leads who are willing to act for free, I think we will be able to make this happen. So, instead of Mora, you'll help with filming and production. Oh, but how can we help with that? We don't know much about making a film. All right. Pull yourself together, Xavier. Tell us if there are still any open positions left among the crew. 
Uh, oh, uh, all right. Uh, let me think. We still need a camera operator, a clapper loader, and someone to manage logistics. I originally wanted to personally serve as director, but I've been too busy working as the producer. So the positions of director and director's assistant will also need to be filled. Paimon knows what the director and the logistics support person do, but what's a clapper loader? The clapper loader is responsible for using the clapper board to record and organize the information of each shot when the camera operator begins shooting. The work requires both patience and careful attention to detail. A clapper board? Oh, you mean the thing they hold that goes clap whenever they start filming? Yes, that's right. Are you interested in that job? For sure! Paimon's always wanted to try that! All right, then you'll be our clapper loader. I can find someone from the store to help with logistics. What do you think, Xavier? Oh, fine by me. As for our camera operator, I was thinking of letting the Traveler take the role. Oh, she's great when it comes to using a camera. Paimon can't even count how many things we've taken photos of during our journey. Yes, that's also what I was thinking. I noticed the Traveler had an eye for photography and composition when we worked together previously. I'm sure that's due to the Traveler's journey across Devat and all the places they've seen. After so many adventures, using a camera must be second nature by now. What do you say, Traveler? Are you interested in the job? Thank you, it really means a lot to me. Come on, friend. Let me give you a big warm hug. So, all that's left for us to find is a director and an assistant. Oh, me, me, me! I want to be the director's assistant. All we need to do is help the director, right? I can handle that. All right, then all we need is a director. Oh, all the well-known directors in Fontaine are probably also busy working on their own films these days. I'm not sure who will have time to help. Oh, Farina helped out a theater troupe recently by serving as an artistic consultant. She could be a good director, right? Besides, it's not like she has anything else to do right now. Farina? Uh, do you really think Lady Farina would be willing to help us with our humble project? <laughs> Isn't that the name of Fontaine's Hydro Archon? My brother has already informed me about what happened here in Fontaine. Yep, that's her! She helped out a theater troupe not too long ago, and now she's taking up work as a director! Well, uh... Ah, I saw that musical. Her performance was perfect, and the storyboards were also excellent. Don't let her form or identity intimidate you. She's the best candidate we can think of right now. You'll never know until you give her a shot. Fine, you're right, Chiori. I'll do anything for the sake of my film, anything! Oh, then I'll have to ask the Traveler and Paimon to show me the way to Lady Farina's residence. I just hope she'll agree to help. Do you need us to also come along? No, there's no need to trouble you with this. Besides, you've just arrived in Fontaine, and I'm sure there are many places you would like to visit. Just leave this task to me. It's part of my duties as the producer. Very well. Then we'll be waiting to hear the good news. I'll go with you. By the way, you might want to consider bringing a gift. And don't worry, we won't simply drop you off at Farina's place. We know Farina pretty well by now, so having some familiar faces there should help your chances. Besides, the whole thing was our idea in the first place. All right, then I'll start making preparations. As for the gift... Hmm... A gift for someone who was once seen as the Hydra Archon. I wonder what she would like. I recall that Lady Farina once fancied a clockwork ring. So perhaps I should get another exquisite clockwork contraption for her. Huh? Can't we just bring some desserts, like the Fontanelia Mousse? Hmm, but wouldn't that be a little too cheap? She does like desserts, though. Isn't the Fontanelia Festival happening right now? I heard Avol tell us on the Aquabus that Farina introduced the tradition of going door to door and asking for sweets. To do something like that, she must have a real sweet tooth. 
I agree with Yoimiya. If the gift is too fancy, it might actually make her feel more uncomfortable. Alright then, let's go buy some Fontanalia mousse! But will that really be enough? We'll be asking her to do a lot of work, you know. Hmm, you're right. We need to further sweeten the deal. Huh? You want something even sweeter than Fontanelia Moose? Yes, we'll need a gift that's sweeter than any dessert in the world. Well, what could that be? <laughs> Your words of praise. Looking forward to the good news. You go ahead. No need to worry about us. Oh, I hope Farina will like the gifts we prepared. Oh, and if you still think we should get something else for her, just let me know. I should be able to make some fireworks. 